ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. Brad and I are chuckling because we just talked for about five minutes off air before we started recording, and I kid you guys not, I literally, we hit the record button, and my dogs went nuts. So, uh, I comedically on the go. Yeah. It was like three, two, one, cue dogs. Boom. What a time. Hey, hey you, B, how you doing today? I, I'm great. I am soaked still. Um, I did our uh, field work session live on In the Bag Instagram. Make sure you follow us if you're not. Um, like a lot of people in there this morning, Robbie, support me out in the rain. So it made it uh, thrown in the rain a lot easier today. Um, so bingo card. There's your there's your space for thrown in the rain. We're back at it in the bag style. But hey, doing great. Um, it's been a good week. We're actually... Again, I'm in the warehouse again. This may be my permanent spot. I kind of enjoy doing it in the bag over here, honestly. Um, but we're rearranging the entire warehouse. So, Rob, you're not even going to notice it when you come back up. It's uh, you're telling me different. Next time I come up, that it's not only is it going to be a different warehouse feel, but we're going to be in a new store. We're going to be in new studios, y'all. I'm not, I don't know that I'm ready. I think the kids say glow up. Is that what the kids say these days? That's what we're doing over here. Um, we had, to, yeah, we had to switch up the warehouse too. We can't just let the studio and the retail store have all the fun. So, been a fun week. Looking forward to this week's episode. Um, I love the like slightly overstable fairway slot. It's like my favorite. So I'm looking forward to getting into that. And I we're having a repeat guest today. But yeah, I was telling Robbie off air. It's only, I didn't even recognize his, like him because his bag looks so different from the last time we spoke. It was very early on, so excited for this episode to dig in uh, with Justin. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I will say, like, this this slot, I think, is as much as people try to talk about the uh, the overstable uh, nine speed or the overstable putting approach, right, mm-hmm. as being like a really cloudy area. To me, the thing about that spot is that once you find your pick you're usually good. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm a zone guy. Check. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a pig guy. Check. I'm a A2 guy. Check. You all find your disc that fills that spot. This spot in particular, I feel like can cause, there are, there's so much out there Mm -hmm. and overstable putting approaches pretty much all fly the exact same for everyone. Right. This slot, depending on how fast you throw Mm -hmm. can mean something entirely different right so yeah very very excited for this uh and excited to have justin why don't we go ahead and bring him in what's up in the bag fans hey quick announcement before we get into the episode our uh guest audio was a little sketchy at times but it was a good interview didn't want to redo it so just headphone users beware at times but it should still be a good episode thanks for sticking around thanks for being patient let's get into the episode welcoming into the show we have he's he's a guest he's a friend uh and uh justin we're excited to have you here welcome back sir hey glad to be back yep glad to have you back i was just telling robbie and the listeners that i didn't even like connect that it was you that was coming again i don't know these things until right before and i was looking at your bag i'm like i did not recognize your bag from the last time i think the first time you were on right you had like just 12 discs, right? You had a very a sim- more simplistic bag. Am I thinking of another Justin? I think I'm thinking of another Justin. Uh, no, I had a fair amount of discs, but I had a ton of different molds. Yeah, um, it's very and, different regardless of what I remember yeah. you having last time. Yep, yep, yeah. It's it's definitely gone through some changes. So, um, and uh, we're about to we're about to make a big change. Yeah, coming up. Yeah. So. Okay. For those of you who uh, I promise that our our guest next week, we're not going to talk fairways because we are on (laughs) week three of fairways. Uh, But I feel like this season just comes right because I remember a season and may have been around like the 60s or 70s where I feel like every person that came on, Brad, we were like, you need an overstable mid. Yep. You need an overstable mid. (laughs) Yep. And you need an overstable mid. Uh, and so at least this one, the fairway needs have all been somewhat different. Mm-hmm. Um, but for those of you who are regular listeners, you'll know that last week with Gus, we talked about what if we like your the top of your bag is cloudy. And so it's cloudy, but for no reason. 
because they're all doing something similar for you. So what if we just cleared that out and put in a couple of different options? Like you go and flush out your seven speeds and your eight speeds, and we're going to give you like a Swiss army knife distance driver. And we ended up with the, um, the thrasher is what we ended up or no, it was the wave, Mm -hmm. the wave. Yeah. So, um, that we, we put him there. So Justin, I have the pleasure of getting to play with you. Uh, so, uh, for some people, they're going to be like, Oh, that sounds like a pleasure. And then anyone that really plays with me heavily (laughs) knows I'm going to be a video. Uh, like (laughs) if I play one round with him, I may not be a video. If I play two, I'm probably going to end up doing something. Uh, so Justin, instead of making a video on Robbie C disc golf, uh, we had the conversation we played, um, last week and, or felt like, yeah, it was last week. Uh, and so, um, we were talking and Justin, let's tell them about the discovery of the wave versus the rhythm. Yeah. So, um, I've, I've unlocked some distance, um, like kind of progressively. And I'm at the point now where I can, um, reliably, I'd say through about three thirty um, on a golf line. And, uh, I'd done some field work the other day and I just said to Robbie, I was like, Hey, uh, I've noticed this weird thing where I'm feeling my rhythm as far as my wave. And he just kind of looked at me. He's like, really? And I was like, yeah, I was like, I don't change anything. I don't yam on it any harder. Um, I don't know what it is. And so we got through our round and, you know, I'm nice and loosened up and actually tired by that point. And he was like, I threw my wave and I, I put it like there was, it was a 330 foot hole. I put it five feet in front of the basket. Um, and he goes, throw your rhythm. And I was like, okay, cool. And I put it five feet to the left of that and two feet back. Just the same throw. Yeah. And so it kind of got me thinking, why am I bagging all of these distance drivers that just kind of get squirrely on me and I can, I can back off everything down to a seven speed. Um, and it's, it's consistent is the crazy thing. So, um, I figured, you know, hang on to my distance drivers for my field work bag and see if I can try to unlock something that way. But Mm. you know, for actual playing golf, let's make some, I can help me make some better decisions by taking out some of the chaff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we are, I think that is definitely going to be the majority of of the chat, uh, is sort of talking through that crave to time-lapse area. Um, but ABB, if it works for you, I think we run through the bottom of the bag real fast, just in terms of, I, if you are a gyro fan, you're going to look at this bag and you're going to go, Oh, this feels like a pretty perfect representation of what they, th- what like gyro believes their mid range and down setup is. Uh, right. Especially the mids. Yeah. I mean, your mids are stair step one over the other all the way to the top. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So yeah, they're pretty well sorted. I, I, and watching you, I, I think you've got a pretty good read on like, when to go between each of them kind of a deal uh so that definitely i feel like you've nailed that down so i once again i don't want to mess with what you've got cooking mids and below um so you're putting with the pilots we know that uh and then you've got three envies in the bag so i'm gonna let you and brad i'm gonna sit back envious and let you guys go crazy on the envies. Brad, do you have any questions regarding the envies? No, I think it's a very similar um, kind of headspace I have with my envies. You're going to have your like envy that's straight, but still has that envy like fade on it, right? Which is going to be your new, soft neutron, right, Justin? Like that's just like your your typical envy, right? Um, so the soft neutron is actually, so um, it's a first run. And, and I know, you know, for the longest time, MVP, everybody thought MVP didn't have any variances between runs, but mm-hmm. they cop to it eventually. Um, and that one seems to be like out of the box, more overstable. Like mm-hmm. Robbie seen me throw that one before. And he was just like, yeah, if you're going to yam on one, especially in the woods, yeah. use that one. So that's, that's kind of, I tend to use that more in the woods. Mm-hmm. It's actually more reliable. The purple, um, like prism plasma mm-hmm. is the one you were talking about. It's that typical MV flight. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it 
it flies like a fresh electron at this point. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it started out as almost a meat hook. Um, but I've been throwing that one for probably two years now mm-hmm. and that would be the closest thing to my precious child. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. I think, and then, I think for me, I, I, coming back to your neutron one really quick, I think that's what I was like maybe yeah. trying to say and said it the wrong way, but like, I like a very like overstable envy that I know I can hit really hard and will push straight, but have that like real, that nice over stability at the end. At least for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you find like if I need to put it on a if I need to put it on a little bit of a flex, I know it's coming. Yeah, out. yeah, exactly. So that makes sense. And then yeah, your prism plasma. Um, when you first got that, and you said it was more of a meat hook, did you? I I find that any of like the prism uh, envies I've thrown have tend to be like a little less overstable off the shelf. Have you felt that with any other ones you've thrown? That's not like a first run um, SE. You sent me one a while back in one of the, the foundation celebration uh, boxes mm-hmm. and it flew almost identical to my beaten in one. Okay. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah. I will say, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense because, and, um, Isaac, who's a new employee here, he was asking about prism envies and I was like, yeah, they tend the ones I've thrown all tend to be like a little, a little, like I'm not gonna say flippy, but they're definitely less overstable than like a fresh, like, neutron envy or like a um a proton envy and then i think we yeah this one go ahead this will definitely like stand up a little bit mm-hmm. um but it does it doesn't have a lot of turn no nah. um it's just uh it, it's just my dead straight like tunnel shot envy yeah that makes sense and then right now i think the the precious shot i'm always looking for is the electron i like electron firm personally Mm -hmm. but that like electron envy that's just like just beat up that will either just go really straight or have like even a little turn to it so i don't have to bag a proxy that's really what i'm looking for that's yeah that's the electron soft i've got uh Mm -hmm. robbie used to sing the praises of electron softs and how they once they beat in they are unique to almost every other envy out there and like and i'm looking for an actual turnover envy i would like for that to uh, eventually replace my paradox, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Cause I throw my paradox almost like a throwing putter. Right. Like I don't ever put any kind of heat on that. Like 180 foot, you know, just kind of lazy turnovers. Mm-hmm. Um, any more than that. And it gets unreliable. I would rather have like an envy that does that. And so mm-hmm. I, any chance that I can play a single disc round, I'm throwing that, uh, that electron soft envy just to try to beat it in faster. Yeah. So. I think that makes sense. It's, it's an interesting theory that I like, I'm finding more and more. I don't know if I talked about it with you, Justin, or I talked about with someone else, but it was this idea of like precious child for me with a pig is it's flippy. Uh, like you cannot watch me throw that disc and be like, Oh no, it's overstable. Like Mm -hmm. it doesn't burn out of any Anheuser that I put it on. Like, uh, of course the Justin and I both can play regularly in Inverness. Mm -hmm. There's a turnover shot up a hill. So most people will either go too overstable trying to flex something or they'll go too like they don't find the middle ground. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they fade out left on this hill or they burn over and they go all the way down this chasm and it doesn't work. Uh, and I know that precious child I can throw on some Anheuser and it'll go all the way up there. But I also know that I could throw precious child basically outside of destroying the integrity of the mold, AKA Mm -hmm. as someone who has on video now twice put multiple holes in a Frisbee before, (laughs) uh, there, I just don't think that precious child is going to get any more understable than it already is without like i said the rim breaking without the rim folding a hole being made in the flight plate which would all make it illegal to throw so therefore Mm -hmm. i would not use it um so i wonder for a base plastic envy as maybe this is where the internet can really come in and help us uh like as a comment section because i'm sitting with two people who season envies regularly how flippy have y'all seen an envy get uh, because when you say you wanted to replace your paradox, in my mind, I wonder if it can ever get past an uplink. It can. Um, yeah. I the only reason yeah. I say that, Robbie, I just someone had an envy that they turned into the use section, and like I looked at it, and it like almost 
it's not puddle top but it like you can see the shoulder and it's kind of like just warped down in a little bit and i was throwing it yeah. in my field the other day on a, a little bit of baby hyzer it would flip up and turn and, yeah, and not... we call I, I call those clover tops yeah um yeah that makes sense yeah uh go look at uh bo mclaughlin's white electron envy that he throws that's fair i forgot about that guy uh but see that one as well i'm looking at it and i'm like okay like bo's uh Bo is a local he's a Huntsville pro to us team MVP Brad um and mm -hmm. Bo his it's his precious child as well and I mean that thing like I'm trying to like demonstrate it for our visual watchers <laughs> with my hands that's mm -hmm. what like the flight plate looks like this yep like it's it so odd. broken <laughs> yeah so I guess that makes sense and the it hasn't the rim hasn't broken the flight plate hasn't broken so mm -hmm. it's still legal but I guess yeah. you do have to get it to there, which is possible. And, uh, and, and look, none of, none of us are Conrad, but I have seen him throw some flippy envies. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I never, you know, profess to be able to huck a, a putter as nearly half as far as him. But I figure if he can get one there, then yeah. mortals can get one close. Yeah, well, I, I'm here for it, and I, I look forward to seeing it. Uh, and I like that, I like that everything has slotted in where it has. Uh, I can definitely agree. I, I would also be curious for like later research finding what prism, like what makes it prism, because I know even we had a discussion in the Birdie Fam of Prism Proton, which mm -hmm. is not Prism Plasma. Uh, but Prism Proton is what the new Eagles, the like mm -hmm. Phoenix mm -hmm. uh, Rebirth, I think is what it was. Um, those were being straighter than people anticipated them to be kind of a deal. So that is the ultimate envy. That disc has it is just so good. It's looking for a spot in my bag and I just can't I can't quit my Prism Plasma or my Prism. Yeah, Prism Plasma. So the Prism uh, envies. Any of the prism, as I understand it, and gyro nerds, correct me if I'm wrong, actually don't have the weighted material in the rim, mm. and so it actually lacks the gyro ness um, mm. of some of the other ones. So, so throwing it faster, yeah. like standard speeds, it just flies like a normal putter, as opposed to the gyro effect taking over, even when thrown slower, which will cause it to hook more. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can, you can actually see into them. Like I got a clear Eagle envy right here. Like this one. Yeah. This one's really clear. Like you can see there is, uh, nothing. Yeah. Fascinating. Nothing in there. Good to yeah. know. Hey, we learned okay. something new every day. Let's get off the envies. We can yeah. talk envies for four hours. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to in the bag. If it's an envy, it's in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'll go ahead and say, because you know, Brad did say on anything I can do to keep a proxy out of my bag. I will defend the proxy throwers here. Uh, the tournament that I'm going to play in a week and a half, I won MA1 because I had put a proxy in my, I had discovered the proxy like three weeks before and it flew so well for me that I just got to that course and I threw that proxy every chance I got and people were so mad because they were like, what is that disc you keep throwing? I'm like, dude, it's a proxy. I don't know how people aren't just like talking. This was, this was pre, uh, pre holy shot. Mm. so uh like we See, were my, we were cooking my thing, my thing with proxies is that, like i can make an envy into a proxy eventually yeah for so sure i bagged them for a little bit and so that but now that you know mvp takes forever to season but now that i've got one you know i feel like the uh you know my my purple ones kind of like that prism plasma is similar to like, like I said, like a fresh electron envy, but also like the fresh premium proxy. uh, yeah. proxies yeah, um, are very similar. Yeah. So it's like, all right, I'll just be one or the other. Yeah. yeah. It's the same for me. I've, I've, I like the proxy feels fine. It feels great. It's just, I want to only bag envies. I don't want envies and proxies. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm right. I'm with you guys. It's the same reason that I hate the Burke. Uh, and I hate on the Burke is, when at the end of the day, a proxy, it does this and it does it really well. But when you want a proxy to have more hook, it can't because it's, it's the mold and the envy can fill both slots. Well, when a Berg, people want those upshots with a Berg, I can get other discs to do that as well. But then when I want 
that other disc to do something, it can and the bird cannot. Uh, but that's fine. I'm not going to get I that's going to get me comments anyways. So yeah. there's a lot, sorry, of, a lot of triggering happening right now. A lot of Here triggering. We go. Let's get back into the non triggering gyro mid ranges, guys. Yeah, Everybody yeah. loves them. Yeah, uh, a tried and true disc for us. We love like we're just walking through it. I think it all makes sense. The one that I have the most question on is your hex that's in the bag is a you said it's 158 grams it is it is how does it fly in comparison to because that glow Mm -hmm. reactor i see like the eclipse reactor Mm -hmm. um and yours is seasoned but like how does that hex slot in yeah i'll be honest uh it looks well sorted but i'm i'm the most torn about some of my myths i feel like i have too many of them i feel like there's some you know, some in-betweens that I try to hit. Uh, and, like right now, that hex fly is just slightly more stable than like a brand new detour. Um, mm. And I don't, I'm at a point now where I want control on the mids. Um, and so the lightweight mid is kind of on the bubble because I would rather have the heft. I don't care about the distance with the mid. I necessarily, I want the flight. Um, and so I'm honestly thinking about taking out that hex and maybe the uplink. I don't know. That uplink has gotten pretty seasoned. Um, mm-hmm. but trying a high, like a heavy detour, like a, a max weight detour. Cause I've got, uh, I, I want a gyro box, a gyro palooza box, and I, I finally got one. So it, it might be worth having just to have, you know, that, uh, reliability of the weight there if that makes any sense no um do you have a dip, do you have a hand field like preference between the hex and the reactor or both feel equally mm, good i like the hand feel of the hex i like the reliability of the re- reactor i like the glide of the hex um mm. and so yeah i i think i i think i smell what you're stepping in where i like i could just season three reactors instead of having he- a hex there at all is that is that kind of what you're moving towards I was going even more towards if you're if you're gonna pull that hex, I think try the detour, try it for sure. But I think like if that reactor is see if that glow reactor is seasoned in enough to really fly like a negative point five one, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. then I to me as someone who has a Eclipse reactor in my bag, uh, that Elaine King has been in there for a long time, and it's still. I would not describe it as one fade. I would definitely describe it as two. And so I think if like, if you're just replacing, replacing, you could pull the hex out and put in a brand new hex to replace that eclipse reactor. Mm. Um, and then, uh, cause like, I think a neutron hex yeah. would fill that spot yeah. immediately. I tried, um, I tried but that's a where, yeah. Proton, like the OTB open proton hexes of last year had a little bit more fade to them, but it wasn't quite as much as, um, like if there's any kind of headwind, um, I was still coming back to my reactor. So, um, maybe I just leave the hex in for a little bit, beat on that reactor a little bit more till it gets, you know, good and straight. And then, uh, Justin, I'm a, Justin, I'm a hold you up there. Uh, cause your phone is getting real laggy on us here for a second. So, yeah. uh, I'm gonna let it settle for a second. Let you, uh, let everything catch up. Yeah. It says reconnecting. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the big thing for me, yeah. Looking at that is the pyro. The pyro is one of those discs that when I talk about the pyro with non MVP people, what MVP people try to tell me the pyro does is just quite simply not, I believe, what the pyro does. Uh, like everyone's like, they watch Simon throw the pyro and that's how they think the pyro flies for them. And when I think back to my days of throwing a pyro, the pyro was like, it was my justice. Mm-hmm. That's my experience with the pyro as well. I've thrown like prism plasma pyros even and they're just very beefy for me like i was trying to decide between that and the quake to be honest with you at one point yeah and see even the quake i would put is like even a touch less stable 
than a pyro because like in my mind the quake is what i hold my eclipse reactor for like that it's going to go straight and then it's going to fall out should be i should preface glow quake okay okay yeah. i could not say i throw one of those i would say uh, i throw predominantly that pyro. <clears throat> that pyro gets brought out for forehands more than anything um not that like i don't think any disc could be a forehand disc but i think you know and that is probably a lot of people and so they're probably chopping them on Anheuser more than they think, or they know it's so overstable that they're even mm. throwing it on backhand on, on Anheuser. I throw flex lines for the most part with that. Um, and I honestly don't, I found myself leaning on the deflector more than the pyro because I, I know it will find the ground. Um, mm. So yeah, those two kind of fight a little bit. Um, I feel like the, the reactor slot is kind of up in the air. It's like, I don't know. Um, like, honestly, I feel like I could almost go with like a matrix instead of the pyro and the reactor. And then also like a detour instead of the hex and the uplink and then slim my bag down that much. So, yeah, you're definitely yeah. not star for choice yeah. with MVP. I, and I'm not married to MVP either. Like, honestly, I started throwing MVP because I like the way they feel. And I realized I had a plastic addiction. Um, and so I needed to, like, if I, if I pulled myself down to one company, maybe I'd quit buying everything. And I'm at the point now where I see new stuff come out. And I'm it like, worked. It did. It did. It did. Um, and I see stuff come out now and I'm like, mm, I like what I have. So... You know, I feel like I can open up a little bit more and explore. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I, 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 I think that the uplink, if there's, if there's anything on to me that would be on the fringe, it would be that paradox yeah. and just seizing the uplink a little more shifting, almost shifting it down. Like everything shifts down detour possibly slots in. And if the detour doesn't work, try it for a little bit. Right. And if it doesn't work, then you're just putting in a hex, like a right. new hex over there. And then messing around and see if you're going to the pyro less than the deflector anyways, or if you're going to the deflector more than the pyro anyways, see what a brand new Eclipse reactor does in there and like just ride that for a little bit. I think people get very hesitant to just make a change. Uh, right. Like mm -hmm. I feel somewhat consistent in this bag. So why would I make a change? And as someone who... Unfortunately, you guys are seeing stuff two weeks after it happens on my channel because I filmed it all. Mm -hmm. So I did my in the bag. I talked about my issue with my fairways and then I filmed my in the bag and it dropped two weeks later. And then I shot a video right after. I think it might have been the same day my like in the bag actually dropped of me comparing servos craves to stalkers and passions. And that spawned an idea so I'm a week into, I've pushed all the stalkers out of my bag. Like they're all gone. And now I'm just throwing one specific mold. I'm not going to spoil it for people, but I'm throwing this one specific mold and I love it. Like it's yeah. been phenomenal. Well, it, the, uh, the mids, but y'all are seeing it for weeks. Yeah. Yeah. The, the mids freak me out a little bit because they're such a huge part of my game. Uh, you know, we play like, you know, my home course is Inverness. It is woods golf. I throw mids or putters off of 80% of my throws. And so yeah. I know, I know my mids now. And so, I mean, I look, I'm, I'm about to chop like eight discs off the, off the bag. Maybe just leave it like it is, you know, what's, well, if it works, that's know, true. Keep that's it in the true. bag. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so speaking of which let's jump into it. Uh, yeah, yeah. so top end of your bag, you've got two rhythms and a crave. Those we feel pretty confident are sticking around, yeah. right? Okay. So, uh, let's, let's talk about what those three do for us because from there we will be able to chop everything. Like these are going to be our frame of reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Cool. So talk, talk to us about them. So, um, let's see, I've got my, my flippy rhythm. Uh, it's a like, uh, what is it? Mid one sixties or a low one sixties fission. Um, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's gotten pretty beat in and, um, yeah, I don't know what else 
it stands up. Yeah, I can make a turnover. Um, I throw on a ton of hyzer. Like my tech disc tells me when I first started throwing on it was like 30 degrees. It's ridiculous. And so, uh, it flips up. I can like, yeah, my, my, uh, my flat is 10 degrees at least. And so I can turn that over with ease. It goes, you know, 330. Um, and yeah, just full S flights out of it. I love it. It's kind of my workhorse now. Um, I've got a flat top, full weight rhythm. It's Neutron. It's first run. Those were known to be like, it's a, it's kind of a theme with MVP. Their first runs are a lot more overstable. It seems like. So it's, mm. uh, it actually kicked out another crave because I can reliably let this one fade. And I like the hand feel of an actual seven speed better than a six and a half, like six and a half yeah. almost feel like mids to me sometimes. And I just get that, mm. I, I, I get that confidence of a driver feel or more of a driver feel out of an actual seven. Um, so yeah, that's what that one is. And then the crate that's currently in there is, uh, it's a new one. It's a uh, Bo McLaugh. It's another one of Bo's discs. Um, it's, uh, his fundraiser stamp. Um, and it is a little more, it's one of the beefier craves. So I can, I can rely on it, but I wouldn't want to put it into a headwind. Um, it doesn't really flip up. It holds a line. It goes, it goes where it's told. Um, whereas that, that fission, or sorry, the, the neutron rhythm just goes straight, you know, a little bit of S flight comes back straight. Crave will end up left, but I still don't, I still don't trust it. Um, and so that's, okay. those are the seven speeds I've got because there's or six and a half, seven speeds is cause there's kind of a dearth of them in that, like there's a giant hole in MVP's stable mid or uh, fairway slots. So um yeah uh so brad does that give you like good oh, reference yeah. for mm -hmm. where yeah, we that were makes a lot of sense so looking at the top side of the bag uh like we opened up with when justin came in that we last week the way that we tackled a bag that was somewhat similar is we said let's get rid of the top end and let's give you one workhorse driver uh and we ended up giving that driver i think that you have that workhorse already in the bag. Uh, and I don't think that it's the grace or the wave. It's definitely not the time lapse. We know that's for sure. Uh, but huge, huge, huge arm. You know, Come on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this man's crushing a time lapse. Uh, so that, t that 30 degrees of hyzer, he throws so hard, his 30 degrees of hyzer time lapse stands up. And that's why we're making him get rid of all his distance drivers. That's right. Uh, that's no, it. Uh, it is. We, so that end of the bag, like, like he talks about in the opening, the fission wave flies almost exactly like it. To me, you can tell me if this is wrong. I, watching your fission wave fly depending on how well you hit it it always lands somewhere between your two rhythms yeah yeah that's fair yep like if you don't hit your rhythm like if you don't hit the neutron rhythm and you don't hit the wave they're still going to end up in similar spots as to if you do hit your rhythm and if you hit if you hit your fission rhythm and you hit your fission wave well, they're going to end up in similar spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And I hit my rhythm well more consistently, I'd say. Like it's less, yeah. you know, uh, the wave is almost too flippy at this point. It's very, very beaten in. Yeah. <clears throat> so. So the grace, the grace would t like obviously fit more of a, I'm thinking of, we have the seven speeds you have in your bag right now, right? Like more headwindy. I don't feel like any of these are going to get there. We can also obviously flesh out the other side. So the gray seems like it could slot into that well, but that being that 11 speed, larger rim, larger rim variants, things like that. So the disc that jumps out to me the most, and I don't know if it is to you as well, Brad, maybe because it's the most colorful, mm -hmm. that <laughs> Tesla, Tesla. Yeah. What's the Tesla do for you right now, Justin? Uh, yeah, it's uh, my headwind. Um, yeah, just if I need it, 
if I need it to go left, but actually still get distance, then yeah, I, I stand by the Tesla. Out. And that's a lack of the speed. I mean, you see that hole there. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so that I have the, my hesitance to drop everything high. I mean, my antennas, uh, I've got a, a, you know, decent array of them. I think I've got three in the back right now. Mm -hmm. But that Tesla, definitely, if there is any wind, um, it's coming out, of, you know, barring a gale force headwind and then a fireball comes out. Um, yeah. But, and would would you say that your insanities fly? How how much farther are your insanities going than your rhythms are going? Like a negligible. That's yeah. you know if it it, it would like, uh, if it was bendy on that same hole that you saw me to break out with the wave and it was within, I mean I, I was putting them within the bullseye of each other, um, mm -hmm. and that's a fluke. I'm not that consistent. <laughs> Yeah. You just dialed that day. But, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good day. Um, so, so, yeah, so I just with, don't yeah. see that, like, if there's different, like, I'm not making great decisions when I, what it, what it comes down to is when I'm in a tournament setting, I'm not making great decisions because I've got mm -hmm. the mud, the waters are muddied. So I can't, with confidence, pull one out of the bag, be like, oh, yeah, this is, this is the move right now. Yeah, 330 foot shot, there are three different discs at least fighting for that spot. And you're never going to walk up to that and be like, Oh, I picked the right one because if it goes just a hair wrong, now you're questioning it every other time that pops up for mm -hmm. sure. Um, yeah. so if the rhythms are shining, let the rhythm shine. Uh, now fireball, the tilt, we don't even talk about the tilt cause I know why the tilt's in there. It's there for a couple specific <laughs> holes we have in town that are just weird. Uh, but, and you can attack them. A they, that ways. one might stay in the bag. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just great. Uh, I love when we play with people and we play around and Justin throws the tilt and people are like, what disc was that? And he's like, I bag a tilt unironically. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's a whole thing. Um, so I, I like all of this, Brad, let's talk disc that you recommended. Um, all or right. You threw because today might've been, I'm very curious with the conditions you played in with one of the discs. And you'll know which one very soon. Yeah. All right. So today I threw the Vila from Millennium, Calvin Heimberg's signature Vila. Mm -hmm. And then I threw uh, the Cookie from Clash. So Cookie 7502. The Vila is 74 negative 1.52. So I, the Vila, Vela, some are going to call it. Uh, we'll just say it both ways. If Brad, how about this? We'll tag team it. You say Vila. I okay. say Vela. Uh, hey, if we, if we look at the rules of English, at least that the vowel at the end, makes the vowel, the initial vowel say its name, which would be E. So it would be Vila technically. Ooh. I, you, Ooh. Hey, Brad, I'm just trying to say <clears throat> that I am on another podcast with a good friend, Jason, Bards of the Board. I'm not trying to shamelessly mm -hmm. plug it, but it's a board game podcast and you should check it out. Anyways, uh, on there, there's a game called Agricola. Mm -hmm. But the modern man would look at it and say Agricola. Right. And anytime we mention it at this point, we have to like caveat it because we got comments for the first few episodes where we kept saying it because it's one of Jason's like all timers. Mm -hmm. And we kept being like, Agricola, Agricola. And people were like, you illiterate people. It's called <laughs> Agricola. Uh, like, that's funny. Whoa, dude. What? Like, there's like a hundred people watching this podcast. I need you to back off, dude. Yeah. Uh, so. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna stick with right up in it. Uh, that sounds that sounds kind of Italian ish, so maybe yeah. it doesn't operate on English standards. Uh, da, 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 da. The yeah, so the Vila, the Vila, the Vila. Yeah. 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 So you yeah, call it the Vila. I'll call hands. it the Vela, Brad. We're the Calvin good, Eagle. Um, the Calvin the Eagle. Is what we're <laughs> okay, so these two discs, uh, I've held both of them myself. Hand feel, you got to talk about it because the hand feel is vastly different. Yeah, the I mean, the cookie is that soft, steady, beautiful clash plastic. It's kind of rounded. The um, there's no, I mean, it's 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 a very interesting feel for a seven speed. I'll say that. 
Yeah, because it does have that nice rounded shoulder. Um, the Vela, the Vela, um, it is like the. It was more noticeable when my hands were freezing and it was like the, the rain was happening, but it definitely has like a more aggressive like um, flashing. It's not rough. It's not like I'm going to cut my hand off like old Prodigy or anything, but it definitely is. It to me, it feels faster than a seven speed Robbie. Like it has like a faster feel to it. It's not bigger, but it just it feels like a little faster, a little more aggressive. Yeah, it's it's How's the depth. I was going to say, I think um, it's deeper. Yeah, definitely deeper. Well, no. Mm. Let me think it, about this. To me, my my hand feel, and like I said, I know both these just well. My hand feel is that the reason the Vela is going to feel deeper is because the clash, that, that rounded that shoulder bevel, yeah. is going to, even if your fingers are getting the same depth in, that rounded mm. bit makes it feel like I'm not as far in. It comes off yeah. easier. Yeah, because of the rounded rim. I, I will say, in the rain, I did feel much more confident with the Vila Vela than I did the Cookie because of that reason. And now that you're saying it, because like visually they look about the same, but like yeah, hand feel wise, I definitely feel like I can kind of dig into the Vila. Yeah, I definitely feel like it has like a deeper hand feel for sure, even if it's not actually. What would you recommend for someone who hates a Volt? Ooh. Hmm. Yeah. Which one feels better? Probably the, the least volt like. Probably the Vila for sure. I would say so. Okay. Because the the volt to me has like it's not rounded. Obviously, it's gyro, but it kind of has that like that like I don't know. Not a. It doesn't feel like a mid, but that round like I don't know. There's something about maybe like the dome or the shoulder that has like that feel to it, maybe, or like the impression. Yeah, of it one. feels fat. Fat. Yeah, that's probably a better way um, to say. It. Yeah, the I mean, and you can see it for those visual people like this Vila Vela is very flat on the top. It's a it has a shoulder, but it, it's like pretty flat. The cookie is too, to be fair, but it just has that rounded end or edge. So that that you answered one of the, my big questions was you had to play in not great conditions, and there that rounded edge people you either love it or you hate it. Uh, mm -hmm. and like when I recommended the cookie to someone or they tried a cookie out of my stock, uh, about a week ago on a backhand, they hated it on a forehand. They loved it because it came off so smooth mm -hmm. every time. So, uh, rain releases backhand and forehand. How is it feeling on your ability to transfer power into the disc? Um, I definitely feel like the V like a, I could give it a little bit more in the rain. I didn't feel like it was going to slip. Um, cookie, this is backhand and cookie. It was, it was fine. It wasn't like I was like, I'm going to lose this, but I did the first couple throws for any of those, anybody watching the live. Uh, I did grip lock them cause I was so concerned about letting them go early. I was like, just kind of holding them a little too tight. Um, so like maybe like mentally I wasn't super worried about it, but like physically I definitely was when I was going to throw, I was definitely holding on to them a little tighter just naturally. Cause it did feel like it wanted to kind of slip out. Uh, forehand is kind of the same way. I know some people like how easy it comes like a rounded disc may come out of their hand, but I like to almost like painfully shove the disc back into my, like th we'll call it the thumb pit. Mm. Uh, like I kind of like, but I do the power grip as well. So I like it yep. like really shoved back in there and anything that kind of has that rim, like that rounded rib, it, it's more, it's definitely more comfortable, but I don't feel like I have like the grit that I kind of need pushed all the way back in. Um, it was not ideal conditions for forehand. My forehands looked atrocious today. Um, I definitely got probably more wobble out of the cookie than I did the Vila. If I'm again, I'm trying to like be as, rational as possible because i know like it was really like raining but i definitely had more wobble out of the cookie because i just didn't feel like i had it as tight i don't think in my hand i definitely did, didn't want to throw it as hard on forehand forehands where i was like a little scared especially because i had that old van that just sits there and then i had another like box truck that was parked so there was like a gap i had to hit today in the rain so it, i was not feeling confident with the cookie um that van's gonna learn. Yeah, yeah. One of these I, days, it's just gonna catch a stray, and that's mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah, like 
and that that would be the real question mark is if it, it did and just no one ever said anything. like it just it just still sat there yeah. um now brown when we first got on there was a surprise moment uh for you with both of these discs uh mm-hmm. like a big surprise talk about that that realization with these two yeah even um i would not expect maybe the vila a little bit but just based on how it feels and the plastic it is and like the four glide like it says like this is going to be a little more stable than you think it's going to be um i would not expect to be able to flip up either one of these discs and even in the rain like when i got them dry enough and i was like trying to like put them on a little baby hyzer and really hit them as hard as i could in the rain today i was able to actually flip up both of these discs which kind of surprised me hmm. i didn't lose the over stability um, but I was able to flip them up and like particularly the Vila. Um, and I think maybe people feel like I'm leaning toward the Vila or like, I liked it better. Not necessarily. I think it like just surprised me the most and I've never thrown it and I've never thrown any millennium really. So I think I'm just kind of like, it's just intriguing me how it was flying compared to what I expected it to fly like. Um, but yeah, it would like flip and just like put, it would push straight. Even when um, I threw it like hard and like a baby, my normal kind of like flat, which is like a little baby hyzer, would just push straight, um, which is kind of funny. But I did feel like I was even in the rain getting the rotation, like the appropriate rotation out of them. And same thing with the cookie, like I threw a hard hyzer shot and I really tried to put some heat on it because I knew it was throwing on hyzer. And I was I flipped it up as well. Even throwing kind of nose up, I was able to flip it up. So that was a big surprise. I did not, I, I kind of expe- expected both of these to maybe like start out straight and have that nice big long hook, kind of like my evader has. Cause that's what, what I have that disc for is like, it's never going to go, it's never going to turn on me. It's not even going to flip up, but if I hit it really hard and flat, it'll have like this big, like horseshoe kind of like flight almost. And that's kind of what I use it for. Mm. Yeah, the Invader is one that's been on, kind of on my radar as well. Mm-hmm. So, but that's a, like another step over on stability, right? Kind of. Um, I would say these kind of yeah. maybe start competing with them. At the Cookie definitely does. Um, I think uh, overall, um, they seem very similar, but really, I think they're kind of different in my mind. At least what how they were acting for me. Um, I know we talk a lot about having like a more you. Uh, a disc that has more utility for people, not just like a one and done shot type of disc. Um, and that maybe is probably even a little more versatile for your bag with how you're about to chop it down and like kind of get rid of a lot of the noise. Um, for me, the, the, the cookie was, I could throw it on some Annie. It would flex and come back. I could even, but it wasn't so overstable that I couldn't flip it up obviously, which was kind of interesting. Um, and then, it might be a good forehand disc, not in the rain. I just feel like I just wasn't very confident in it, but it was like a very reliably. It's, it starts stretching in the overstable territory, right? It's like, it is overstable, but like it starts to creep over in those overstable slots, but not quite there. It's not so overstable that you can't throw it far. Um, the Vila, what I liked about it, I expected to not go very far because of the four glide and it's kind of flat. And I was like, man, maybe this is going to be like really overstable. Um, but what was interesting about them is they just kind of went really straight for a long time and then had more of a harsh fade. And also if I gave it Annie, it liked it. Like it wanted to keep going, but it wouldn't like burn over. I, I burned over one, but I threw it like that, like an idiot. Cause I almost fell behind the scenes. I almost fell. Um, it was wet okay uh, but uh when i gave it like a little bit of annie like it kind of liked it and wanted to take it but at, and it like had this nice pan and it would it started coming back like i wasn't throwing it far enough today in the rain to see it come back but i or watch the full flight but it was coming back at the end before it would would crash out so i i didn't really expect that disc to do that so that's kind of an interesting like utility to that disc as well and then on hyzer, I could pump it on hyzer and it would flip up and go straight and still have a, a finish. Um, and it, it consistently, I would say went farther than the cookie more, to be honest with today. Mm. So I think with a little practice, and I said it in the live, like with a little practice, I think both of these discs could live in the same bag 
it's just like they are are a little bit different. They would definitely clash, pun intended, uh, if <laughs> if you were like just working them in. But um, yeah, I was really surprised. I know those may be a little all over the place, but it was like a very interesting like field work session today because there wasn't like a clear winner per se or like a clear, hey, this is the solution. Mm. Is there one that you would trust more into a headwind? Cookie. Hmm. For me, Ro- okay. Robbie, does that match how, what you would think? Or would you expect the Vila to be more overstable? Yeah, I think it just depends. Like, it depends on how well you're hitting it. I think you've nailed a lot of it in terms of, like, when you hit the Vila well, it is really straight. Um, it While it can, like... Uh, yeah, like for me, out of the gate, it definitely was a straight flyer. I felt like, okay, I can see what he's going for. And since it was designed to be Calvin's beat in Eagle, like yeah. that makes sense. Um, I, yeah, I would be curious because once again, we're looking at, at we're looking at it as it's Calvin's straight Eagle. Mm-hmm. So for Calvin, it needed to be straight. <laughs> But yeah. Calvin throws 600 feet. Correct. So that's almost twice as far as any of us throw in this call. Mm-hmm. So while I do think that it will have some hook, I could see the Vila in, in depending on how Justin can throw it, I could see it clashing with the Crave. Right. I do think it will have more hook than your Crave does. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Because a Crave, I can flip up and make turn. To be fair, just off the shelf. Right, right. Yeah, you know, like I, the, the way I described that, like the full weight one neutron that I've got, it's fresh still, but it definitely, it almost flies similar to what you're describing. So, um, interesting, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Seven I, speeds are like, there's kind of that weird where it's like we're still, we can almost overpower seven speeds, like with mortal arms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of thing where they can all start flying kind of similar very quickly. Yeah, I was telling someone the other day. So, I feel like seven, that seven, seven, eight, and even maybe some nine speed. I feel like I'm finally getting those up to the speed and seeing more like of the intended flight out of like more discs in that area, which probably makes more sense. Um, but yeah, I, what I what I think is maybe the cookie, and I just wonder if like the cookie is going to kind of bump the crave just for the sole reason of uh, you can kind of like fill a wider gap i guess with the cookie you can like throw a little ante on it um you can throw it straight and have a little bit more overstable so you really aren't doing like crave cookie and then one other disc maybe you're doing um the cookie kind of lives there for you maybe you find something more like overstable like way more overstable maybe right. you go that route um i don't know robbie i don't know what your thoughts are but that's kind of where i'm leaning yeah, I if the the nice thing is is that if you're if you're in theory going to pull the insanities out and the fireball out, like if you're going to pull out so many discs for a time, it's going to require just like some trial and error, mm-hmm. and your bag's going to be flopping right. around anyways because you're going to need discs in there to mm-hmm. fill the six that you pulled out. So. I don't know that it, either way we're recommending that I think, oh, yeah, like you need to preemptively pull the crave in the place of these. I think definitely throw the new ones more than you throw because, you know, at this point, even though it's somewhat new, like, you know what that crave does. And then if you throw a shot, yeah. you're like, oh, that was really sick. Could mm-hmm. I get the crave to do the same thing? Then throw the crave as well. Maybe. Yeah. Let player B show up. Because mm-hmm. honestly, if I'm testing discs, I like to let whatever I think the disc should do, like if I'm fresh in the round, I let the disc that I know go first. So that player B, the benefit goes to the new one so I can know like, oh, I didn't hit that one well. Mm-hmm. Make sure you hit this one well to see like what a good throw is going to be. But then halfway through the round, I always flip to make sure that the new disc is going first to get a realistic expectation of how that disc is going to fly for me on a regular basis. So I think it's just a lot of like filling them out and seeing where they slot in. Because like we said, like 
Brad was throwing him in the rain. So a belief is that you weren't hitting him as well as you could. I would say that's a very safe bet. But it is it is still very possible that like with the depth of the Vela, that while it doesn't seem like you were getting it because you were a little more focused on holding on to it because of the rain, mm-hmm. that you were getting more snap than you're giving yourself credit for as well by Fair. making subtle adjustments. So it's just it I for those who don't play in the rain very often, uh we watch at a local event where none of us like ninety eight percent of the people playing do not play in the rain. And there was like four of us that play tournaments a lot. So we were used to the rain and we were way less hamstringed than most fe- most folks during that event. And that's how it shined, uh, mm-hmm. was the ones who play in the rain, yeah. they succeeded. Uh, so, yeah. I, yeah, I think it was Bo that said, yeah, my game literally doesn't change. I play it the same. Yeah. So, like, he's feeling he's feeling dialed there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I would say yeah. sorting it out. So, Brad, it's to you, your leaning cookie as the recommendation? I think so. I think it's going to be a longer pyro for you. Hmm. That's where I think this is going to land because you throw more hyzer than I do too. So th- yeah. I'm, I'm confident sure. saying it's going to be sure. a longer pyro for you. Yeah. So Justin, we'll get these in the mail to you, brother. Uh, and maybe have you on a little bit. Uh, we're trying to plan something big for episode 100. So if we get these in the mail, hopefully we can have you back for uh, popping in for episode 100. Yeah. Sounds good. Awesome, man. Well, appreciate Dude, having appreciate on. you coming on, Justin. Yeah. Dude. I throw in the cookie in the rain, brave man, braver yeah. than I. Yeah. Hey, it, it was still fun. And we had like twice as many live people in the live this week. And it, it was a lot of fun. I made it the time go by. I didn't notice the rain a ton. So thank you all for that. Make sure you join the in the bag Instagram. I go, I try to go live every week there for these field tests. So it's been a lot of fun. Make sure the links in the description. So make sure you go follow us there. Yeah. No at in the bag pod uh definitely check it out uh yeah no i i think a great episode i i think we talked about some like theories and molds and Mm -hmm. very popular molds and very popular overlaps right that a lot of folks are probably very much in the heat of Mm mm-hmm yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was fun get to, getting to throw some Millennium. Um, we're loving carrying that. People, we're trying to get some people introduced to it as well in the store and online. And um, great stuff. I mean, really, it's not something I'd ever thrown unless we had it, right? But it's always fun. There's so many um, different brands and stuff out there that there's a lot of good molds and a lot of things to get overlooked. Like this, I was telling Robbie, this Vila may, might have... Um, put my FD in danger at one point or may not FD may have never made it in. Cause I mean, I think there's some like definitely overlap, but great disc. Yeah. Well, speaking of great disc, Brad, what's new in the warehouse? All right. We are working tirelessly to get um, all of our MVP restock up. We have a bunch of different molds going up there. I think a lot of streamline went up this week. Um, thought space. We have a full thought space um, restock. We have the Ursus from, uh, terminal velocity. We have a couple uh, mint discs that went up. Uh, Mustang, Free Tail, um, I believe. Just some different stamps. You know how they're always doing their unique stamps. Um, and another big thing, obviously, is our Discraft Tour series. The pre orders went up. The pre orders are still live. Um, by the time you're listening to this, they may be like actually in the warehouse. Mm. So if you pre order those, thank you. Those will be shipping out. But excited to get our hands on all of that as well. Um, but big thing is we still have, we don't have a ton, but we have some, uh, in the bag custom stamp discs. Make sure you check those out. There are FDs and origins. Um, the boys on grip locked have some Innova and tour life has disc craft. So make sure you check out all your favorite podcasts and their uh, custom stamp discs. We also have in the bag minis now and in, in grip lock minis and tour life minis. And also your Hey-o. boy, Dennis, uh, on minis as well. So make sure you're checking out those. Um, con- we have some new in the bag merch that went up. So make sure we have an episode 56 shirt. If we're still stuck there, if you want to be stuck there with us, make sure you pick one up. Right. Ours will be in here very soon. I'm very excited about it. Stuck makes it sound like a bad thing. No, I'm happy to be chilling here. Hey, are you, are you ever, I mean, you could be stuck. You could be stuck anywhere yeah. and you know, that's okay. That's okay. Stuck 
is uh is relative, I suppose. I love it. Well, it sounds like some definite, definite awesome things. Make sure you head foundationdisc.com. You're going to find that new disc. You're going to be like, wow, this is incredible. It grows well in the rain. It goes well when it's dry. And you know, if it's good, keep in the bag. We'll see you all next week. 